When Prime flagships are revolving around the price of some $1,000, the POCO F1 came out of nowhere and took the smartphone market by storm. A $300 phone that has flagship features got everyone intrigued and raised quite a few eyebrows. And then came all the comparisons, even with the smartphones that cost three times the price of POCO F1. Well, you must have already watched a lot of reviews of the POCO F1, but here are my impressions of the device after using it for a month. Well, let's start by talking about the most intriguing feature of this device, Snapdragon 845 with liquid cooling system. With a flagship chipset and more than enough RAM at disposal, I played a lot of games on this phone and the performance was fluid. I did not face any sort of lags or stutter even while playing in high settings. After my success with PUBG, I tried installing Ash Vault 8 and 9 as well. However, the phone does not support these games, although Jay Money, the head of product branch of Pocophone, announced via tweet that the issue had been solved, I am still having some issues with the games. I couldn't find Ashfault 9 on the Play Store in the Pocophone, and when I tried to download it through my browser, it redirected to Google Play, which simply mentioned that the device isn't supporting it. So you have that. I also played other high-end games like Dead Trigger 2, Shadowgun Legends, and Dream League Soccer, and I enjoyed it. One thing that I really liked is how the phone stayed relatively cool during gaming sessions, which was quite great. All thanks to its liquid cooling technology and also the plastic bag, which dissipates less heat. This is a really cool feature for a smartphone available for $300. We pitted the Poco phone against the Galaxy Note 9 and OnePlus 6 for a PUBG session in HDR graphics and ultra frame rate settings, and here are the results for you to see. Another good thing about the device is the camera setup. The POCO F1 gave me a pleasant surprise while capturing pictures. I did not have much expectation from the device because Xiaomi phones in the past have disappointed us in the camera department. But with the POCO F1, you can get images with plenty of details, decent color accuracy and respectable dynamic range. Under ample lighting conditions, you can get some amazing pictures. However, the low light shots were not that impressive. The images contain noises and rains as you can see in these pictures. The pair of camera on the back is meant only for depth sensing. The portrait images do have great edge detection and intelligent background blurring. And in most of the times, the portrait photos captured from the POCO F1 does look like they are shot from premium handsets. Even on the video side, the POCO F1 does equally great. There is no OIS, but there is EIS to keep the shakes and vibrations on the videos to a minimum, and even the captured videos do have quite a stability to them. Subjects in the videos too possess sufficient amount of sharpness in them. So I don't have complaints here. What I like among all the features in the phone is the ability to shoot HD and Full HD video at 240fps. While this feature really comes handy while capturing slow motion videos, the slow motion is not as good as you find on other phones. Talking about selfies, there is a 20 megapixel selfie shooter. Selfies taken from this phone looks really great with abundant details in them. There is also a beauty mode to enhance your selfies for enhancing the skin tone and removing acne and facial blemishes. On the POCO F1, you get portrait mode even on selfies and this does take your mainstream selfie experience to another level but it's not particularly impressive. Since there is just a single camera on the front, detecting the edges and blurring the background is done entirely through the software. So the portrait selfies are usually a hit or a miss, but there are plenty of phones that manage to take better portrait selfies even with a single selfie camera. Comparing the camera with the Galaxy Note 9 and the OnePlus 6, the Pocophone F1 holds it down against the beast. There are some differences in the pictures as it falls short of the Galaxy Note 9 and OnePlus 6 image quality, but that's not very noticeable. The difference is justified by the difference of price among these phones. Another thing that I am not particularly impressed about this phone is the design. The design is nothing very exciting. I mean, just look at it. With a thickness of 8.8mm, it really looks bulky and kind of unattractive. And it has a polycarbonate bag, which is just a fancy name for plastic. The plastic bag has surely cut down the weight and made it lighter, but it feels cheap on the hands and on the use. Xiaomi is known for providing metal bags even on their budget phones. Yes, it's not technically Xiaomi, it's the sub-brand Pocophone, but this compromise made by a so-claimed flagship killer does not seem like a plausible step to me. But it's here, if you don't like it, you can apply a case as well. 
There are some advantages with the back as it does not attract fingerprints so I did not have to clean it like some other flagships. Also flagship phones with glass usually slip through my hands but since it is a sturdy polycarbonate back, even after the falls damages were pretty minimum. You can see it for yourself, even after I have dropped it a few times, it still looks good as new. And talking about something that is not new here is the software experience. Xiaomi has added its custom skin MIUI 9.6 on top. MIUI has always lacked an app drawer all these years, but this time they have provided an app drawer in this one due to which browsing through the apps is relatively easier. But still, it has not given up on the bloatware. Putting the bloatware issues aside, the POCO F1 is also being criticized for having the DRM or the Digital Right Management Security level of L3 and not L1. This means that you can view contents on Amazon Prime and Netflix only at a maximum resolution of 540p. Streaming HD and Full HD videos is not possible when the security level is at L3. The reason for this lockout is that these services are protected by digital rights management to prevent copying and unauthorized redistribution of these kinds of video files. Most of the smartphones like the Oppo F9 and Vivo V11 still have that issue and many people are cool with it. On a small screen of smartphones, that is not quite noticeable. And in countries like Nepal, where the internet is not as fast to stream even 540p videos, users can barely notice the difference. There are also rumors about fixing the issue with the software update, and I really wish it to be true. On the POCO F1, there's a speaker on the right grill, and the airpiece forms a stereo speaker setup. With this setup, the sound output from the phone is quite loud and clear. Now, it may not have that depth in the sound for various genres of music like flagship phones too, but this is not disappointing either. And while playing games, even if the bottom firing speaker gets obstructed, the sound makes its way to you through the airpiece. Even on the connectivity side, I don't have complaints with the POCO F1. The Wi-Fi connectivity and download speeds are really great. There was appreciable voice clarity in the phone calls and I did not face any call drops while using both NDC and NCEL SIM cards. Digging deep into the connectivity side, I found that this phone lacks an FC feature. Now this might be another aspect where Xiaomi has cut corners. Although in countries like Nepal and India, this might be not that big of a deal but in European markets and in the US, people might not be able to make it without this feature. The area where Xiaomi has been generous is in security. The phone comes with a fingerprint scanner and face unlock feature as a biometric authentication tool. The fingerprint on the phone is really fast, it unlocks the phone almost instantaneously and for the face unlock feature, the front camera and the IR sensor come into play. With this setup, the facial mapping is accurate and unlocking the handset with this feature is abrupt as well. Even in pitch dark conditions, the unlocking speed was the same, there was no additional problems whatsoever, so I must say that the infrared sensor has done a really good job here. On the front, you get a 6.2 inches IPS panel. Although the IPS display does fail to reproduce pitch black and inky colors like the Super AMOLED displays, I was not disappointed with the color accuracy on this phone. I was fairly impressed with the viewing angles, contrast ratio, and color saturation. However, the thick bezel at the bottom and a wide notch on the top are definitely some things you need to live up with. Xiaomi has squeezed an airpiece and various sensors including the IR sensor in the notch, whereas the chin houses a notification LED. It is really a weird place to put a notification LED and it took a lot of time for me to get used to it. Continuing with the display, the POCO F1 features full HD plus resolution and looks sufficiently bright. It has good sunlight visibility, so even on a bright sunny day, I do not have problems while viewing the contents on this phone. The phone is also said to come with an old generation Gorilla Glass 3 protection, but since I am absolutely careless with my phone, I put on a tempered glass before I started using it. Now, as I had mentioned earlier, the phone looks really thick and one of the reasons for it is also the battery. The POCO F1 sports a huge 4000mAh battery that backed me up for more than a day on normal usage. At the end of the day, I always ended up with 25% to 30% battery on my phone, so I was fairly satisfied with the backup. Charging the battery is also quite hassle-free on the phone. Unlike the iPhones, the smartphone comes bundled with a quick charger version 3, with which the battery is refilled in around 1 hour and 45 minutes. The phone does support Quick Charge 4 Plus, but availability is an issue here in Nepal.
So here's my verdict. The Pocophone F1 Charlie has done some compromises to keep the prices low and the plastic bag is one of them. But I think that the users can live with it applying a premium case. And since this device was intended for Asian users, the absence of NFC is not that big of a deal. And talking about digital rights management, I think the Pocophone F1 has been presented as a scapegoat in this case because there are other popular phones that are still running on DRM security level of L3 and nitpicking that flaw on the Poco Phone F1 is done intentionally to bring down the hype of the Poco F1. So to sum it up, the Poco Phone F1 is really a great device that costs one third of the iPhone XS, the Galaxy Note 9 and half the price of the flagship killer OnePlus 6. So needless to say, the Poco Phone F1 is really a value for money. Except for a few downsides, the Poco Phone F1 is obviously one of the best smartphones on the market for the money. We do not deny that there are plenty of rooms for improvements on the phone. And we hope that Xiaomi will come with all the issues fixed and with better hardware and design on the Poco F2. Unfortunately, as great as the phone is, its availability is really limited. It does not cater to markets like the US or Canada. And even though it's available in India for flash sales, it's not available here in Nepal. So as of now, we can only rely on Xiaomi Nepal to make it available very soon.